Welcome to Always Analog, where we celebrate the beauty of analog technology in the digital world. Today we are going to look at some unique kinds of pencils. Uh, I've got a sampling here uh, of copying pencils, uh, sometimes used interchangeably with indelible ink pencils although I don't know that the two things are the same always. Uh, so I tried to do some research on, on this and um, I came across some conflicting information, but I want to say that I, I have always thought it curious um, and not surprising that pencils were made that essentially couldn't be erased, that were left a permanent mark, uh, particular before the advent of the ballpoint pen, when, you know, if you were going to do something in ink, you needed to have a fountain pen, you needed to have ink. Um, the convenience of having a pencil that would leave uh, more or less a permanent mark on a piece of paper uh, was beneficial. And then you have copying pencils which I believe were in some ways intended to be able to um, make a, a an image of the whatever it is that you put down on a piece of paper on another piece of paper. Um, maybe not unlike uh, sort of a, a, a ditto. Uh, for those of you who are old enough to remember such things. Well, let's get to the pencils. Um, I want to say thank you very much to my pencil pal, Davnet, who sent me uh, these two uh, copying pencils. And uh, of interest is one of them is vintage. This one here uh, is from the Blaisdell pencil company, which I believe was in Philadelphia. Um, and I want to say they merged with Beryl, or Beryl bought them, Eagle. Uh, anyways, their copying pencil here was called a facsimile, uh, which I find interesting because, of course, um, eventually we came up with a facsimile machine, or better known as a fax machine, which was a way of transmitting images over a phone line. And then uh, he gave me a, so this one's vintage. He, then he, uh, indelible pencils are still being manufactured. And um, here's one, kind of hard to see, I'm sorry, with the light. Uh, let me maybe let me try to hold it a little bit sideways to see if that offers any more clarity, but this is from uh, Viarco in um, Portugal, and this is their, it says Copia, this is their copying pencil, it is in violet, a Duro, uh, that it is a firm core, and so we have that, so we have a vintage, we have a new, and then I had this one that I had ordered from PencilThings.com oh, some time ago. I believe they're no longer in business. Uh, at least their website's gone. So I, But they had indelible ink pencils in a couple of different colors. And I just picked up this one, which is green. Um, and they say it is a copying pencil and an indelible ink pencil. And it was made in the USA, by whom I'm not sure. But uh, perhaps if any of you know who sourced these, uh, where, where they sourced these pencils from, that would be an interesting thing to know. So here are the uh, three copying slash indelible pencils that we have. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, sharpen them and we'll write with them and see how they uh, they hold on to the paper 
uh, or otherwise uh, transfer an image. I'm going to sharpen these up here. And first we'll do the, the one from PencilThings.com. I'm sorry that they are no longer around. They used to have some really fun, cool pencil accessories especially. Uh, things that were really hard to find. Let's see how this is sharpening. I'm getting a lot of the, the core, but boy, uh, it's not sharpening well at all, at least in, in this one. All right, let's try the, and I'm really, really clogged up my, my sharpener there. Let's try the, oh, let's try the Viarco. See if that does any better. Hmm. Fiarco seems to be a cedar wood pencil at least. Okay. Alright, we've got ourselves a little point there. And then let's do the old Blaisdell facsimile. By the way, all these pencils are round, and the facsimile here seems to have a little bit larger than average core. Also seems to be a cedarwood pencil. Okay. So we've got these two sharpened. Uh, the only thing, let me see if I can get this this green one to sharpen. I'll try another sharpener, and we'll get to writing. Let's. Uh, I'm going to start with the Blaisdell, and very hard. I'm actually pressing quite hard on the pencil as I write. And you can see it has a lighter tone. Uh, let me try the Viarco, which is violet colored purple. also very hard. And then I was able to get this green one sharpened in an electric sharpener. And whoop, <laughs> I thought I was. Okay, well, we'll do the best I can. Oh my gosh. Well, this is a much softer core. Well, that's that, okay. Well, this is just impossible to write with. So, okay. But there they are, there's the three. Now, uh, I know that, uh, and Davnet mentioned this in his note, that some people would, uh, as a way to activate these, uh, lick, the, lick the point of the pencil before writing. And apparently, uh, some of these pencils, uh, the pigment that was used was quite toxic 
and poisonous. Uh, so I'm not, I didn't do that. I just, uh, and wouldn't, but I wouldn't do it with a regular pencil either for that matter. But all right, so I'm uh, curious to see what the erasability is here of these pencils. So this is the pencil thing, indelible. Well, okay, it is uh, erasing a little bit. I'm going to try a different style eraser here. We'll do a foam. What else might be good? Just a pink pearl. Well, while it is not erasable, Some of it does lift off. What about the Viarco and the Blaisdell here? We'll try them all. Well, these seem to be holding up a little bit more in terms of adherence. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Blaisdell especially seems to be pretty indelible. Um, and if I were to dampen this, I'm curious to see if it would copy. Um, I'm going to try that. I'm going to give up on this green pencil thing. Um, pencil, but um, let me let me see what happens if I spray a little bit of moisture. Uh, I'm going to let's put down. Let me. We'll do a copy test. And see what happens. Okay, we've got our Blaisdell facsimile and we've got our Viarco Copia pencil here. Um, we saw that uh, in terms of erasability, they do keep uh, they're fairly indelible in terms of leaving an imprint on the page. Now I'm going to give them a little spritz. Do this sort of off camera here. Okay. And then, and I don't know if I'm even doing this right, but I'm going to take another piece of paper. And let's see if there's any transfer. Well, a little bit. Maybe, uh, probably, maybe not. Let me moisten that a little bit more. And then let me do this. And let me really go over it. Um, uh huh. Okay, you can see it's bleeding through. I don't want to tear the paper. This is a, a long way to go, folks, to, to make a copy. But here is the top sheet. There is a tra there is a definite transfer of the image. And then here's the bottom sheet. So there it is. Uh, it looks like the Viarco uh, actually copies a little bit better. That purple color 
does remind me of the old ditto copying process um, uh, that I remember from um, my school days, but there it is. So, a little bit uh, of uh, an experiment uh, and an experience trying uh, three indelible copying pencils. Uh, this one is pretty much worthless. So let's just forget about that. It's, it's almost unusable because the core uh, is so fragile. However, these two pencils uh, both are fairly indelible and uh, do transfer uh, uh, d the image. Perhaps if I had a more um, pressure um, uh, focused kind of a thing that I could press these two pieces of paper together with, uh, I'd have even a better result. So anyways, Dabnet, thanks for sending these to me. I always wanted to try them and see what they were about. I appreciate uh, your generosity here in sharing these, and I appreciate all of you watching uh, as we tried out these copying slash indelible pencils. Uh, if you're at all engaged with the videos here, please subscribe, share, and like, and I look forward to seeing you again real soon here on Always Analog.